Hi everyone, welcome to chapter 3 lab video 3. We are going to uh, continue with the, uh, the project management examples. Uh, right now I'm starting with the PERT example where the activity times are probabilistic. And in the first example it was a CPM, the activity durations were just given. Now we have some activities and it's a different project and what we have is we can have the project uh, activity A that can be completed as in as late as little as two days optimistic and most likely five days but it could go to ten days so in real life you would have some kind of activities like this where you cannot really figure out if the duration is going to stay around three four days or a week etc you have to take this approach and the method was developed by u.s navy and a missile project and they had a lot of uh, unknown uh, uncertain activity durations and they were able to come up with this uh, method you can look at the details from your textbook now if we have this time estimates we have to first start with a finite expected times for these activities and the expected time is the expected duration has a formula it says we are going to open a parenthesis and it's a plus four times the most likely value plus b now it looks like i cannot click on b so i can just click on my left arrow and select that cell otherwise I can just type F3 myself and all those th values I added them and divided by 6 so this is a given formula you have to just use this exact formula to find expected times F5.3 and I double click and I find all the expected durations now if, if you look here if the, the difference between the most likely and the optimistic value and the difference between the pessimistic and the most likely value if they are the same that means if your distribution is symmetric the expected time would be the just most likely value let's look at here one two three it's the most likely value three four five is the most likely value two three four again the most likely value if this was 3, 6, and 9, this value would be 6, okay? Now we also want to put the activity variances, and the activity variance has a formula. It says B minus A, okay, divided by 6 and squared. So I want to just square everything all together, so I'm going to put another parenthesis and get this square using shift and six will just create that exponent sign two so here's the variance for the first activity etc so what does it mean it it is kind of if you take a square root of this variance it's the standard deviation for each activity and each of these durations are sometimes they use the beta di beta distribution sometimes it's a here it is a triangular distribution it's like a triangular shape and there is a variance like it's not certain there is an expected time but it is with a variance there's some dispersion so what we want to do is we only want to look at the critical path and in your uh, homework you have to uh, fill this out yourself I did it here I don't want to just repeat the same stuff again and you can also create your uh, Gantt chart that you have to uh, as your submission and what we want to do is um, I look at here I see that activity A is critical D is critical H and I are critical activities so A D H I is my critical path that means that path is the longest path and the others they have some kind of a slack even if they have some kind of a variance or difference in the in the durations that may not really affect the the total duration sometimes the people also consider these activities and put them the variance of these in the calculations but in this uh, class what we are going to do is we are only going to take the 
the variances of the activities that are on the critical path. So we are going to remove this too and remove EFG as well. Okay, so EFG, or let's just do it in this way. The variance of the critical path say that it is going to be uh, the activity variance here. And let me just pause. So what I want is I want to add the ones, the activities that have the, the, the slack of zero, the ones that are on the critical path. So in this case, I can just use a formula that is some if okay so what some if does is adds the values if they meet a certain criteria so the range in here what we have to do is we have to provide a range for the criteria first so that's my slack range you have to make sure that the the length of these two arrays that we're gonna enter here the same uh, should be the same so that's the range and our criteria is we're going to put the criteria in in quotation marks if they are equal to zero and put another comma we are going to take these range okay so if something happens uh, if we look at the slacks and if it just adds the ones that have a slack of zero and that is 9.9 .9, Accuracy 9.89. So add the 1.78 and uh, 4, 4 and 0 0.11, you are going to get 9.89. Okay, so that's a cool um, function to use uh, in other places as well. Just knowing this is, is a very good idea. So the standard division is going to be the square root of the variance. 3.14 it's not the pi and the project due date is is a number that we are going to enter so well, I have a question now when is the expected completion time of this project day 27 right so what is the probability that we could finish this project in 27 days now you can pause the video and think about it. So if I just determine that I'm going to finish this project in 27 days, what is the likelihood of me finishing this project in 27 days? So I'm going to put that 27 here. So that probability is, is 50%. So why? Because this is the expected time and 50% of the time that the project completion time would be smaller than this and another 50% time, time it's going to be larger than this. So if I assign my due date as 27 days from now, then I cannot really finish my project. Think about this, if these are uncertain times and if you say that I'm going to finish this project in 27 days and you uh, win a contract, then later if you cannot finish it, every day you will become late, you are going to pay a lot of uh, fine. Sometimes every day they charge you $100,000 of fine, so you have to be very careful about setting due dates in these circumstances. So what is the calculated z-value? We're going to use the z-value function where it is x minus mu, and the mu is what? Our um, project completion time, the expected time, 27. I could just click here and divide it by sigma and the calculated z value is zero. Now my probability of on-time completion is I'm going to use a norm in function and actually it's going to be just norm uh, norm norm dist function and because we have the z value we're going to use the standard normal function. Okay, I changed my function three times but this is the correct one. So what it does is, 
instead of you just opening the back of your textbook and looking at that Z ugly Z table that everyone hates just this function will be able to give you the probability and what is the Z value? 0 that means the probability is 50% I can turn that into a percentage what if I set my due date what is the probability that I can finish my project within 30 days there is 83% of chance 35 days 99% chance what is the probability that I can finish this project within 100 days 100% chance right so what value should we put here as uh, the the best value so that we can say we are going to be able to finish this project within this duration so what they do normally is uh, they take this say I want to get set a date maybe I could just finish this project with 95 percent probability so I want this to be 95 percent and how do I do that I could try some numbers but by changing these numbers my probability changes that means I can use another tool in Excel which is the goal seek so under the data tab under what if analysis there is a tool that you uh, we call uh, I think Excel calls it goal seek if you click on it and you just need to enter set the cell which cell J5 I want that cell to be 0 0.95 and how do I get that number by changing the project due date and I found that I need to at least set my project due date to 32 days instead of 27 if I set it up as 32 I have a 95% chance of completing my project on time and why are we using normal distribution where our time estimates are triangular distribution and the reason for that is when you add the triangular distribution enough uh, triangle distributions uh, together convoluted, convolute them just add them uh, to each other the summation of the triangular distributions will be approximately normal distributed so that's why we can use a normal distribution idea here to determine the project due date and also determine the prob probability of, of on-time completion and thanks for watching so what I want from you guys is just do these steps and finish the CPM part as I have done and do the PERT, do the early start, early finish, late start, late finish values and again chart for this and project completion time then maybe take a scenario say that what if um, you know the time estimates change so maybe change the time estimates of D or E maybe, no maybe one of the the activities that are not on the critical path and change the duration so you are going to see that uh, because you change the time estimates it's going to change the slack on the critical path it's going to change the variance of the critical path and it's going to change your project completion time and your probability of on-time completion will be uh, changed as well then you can comment on your results thanks for watching